You are listening to the Manifested Sis Podcast, a safe space for women of color to explore all things manifesting, wellness, self-care, and personal development. You are always manifesting, and now you can do it intentionally and consciously to create the life of your dreams. Each episode gives you actionable tips and strategies from the spiritual to the practical that will help you get from where you are to exactly where you want to be with grace and ease. Thanks for tuning in. Here's your host, intuitive life coach, Danny Faust. Hey, welcome back to the Manifested Sis podcast. I am so excited that you're back. Thank you for tuning in. Today we have our very first interview episode, so I'm geeked. (laughs) I have my friend Michelle Y. Talbert here to discuss her personal development journey and manifesting tips to help you on your own. Michelle is a recovering attorney who hosts unnetworking trainings, masterminds, and goal-setting intensives for women in business around the country with her flagship brand, Her Power Moves. In January 2020, Michelle opened the doors to her power space in Sunrise, Florida, a woman forward and men welcoming hospitality based co-working and event venue that includes a content creation studio for podcasting and video recording. Michelle is also the chief curator of the online community where people do commerce, the Unchamber. Michelle's entire purpose in life is to be the queen of online and in-person communities where people in business can connect and ethically create cash flow. Michelle is a graduate of Cornell University and the University of Pennsylvania School of Law and holds a certificate in business policy and management from the Wharton School of Business, all achieved while raising her two school-aged children as a divorced single mom. Originally from New York City, Michelle now lives in Broward County, Florida. Woo, she's amazing. Let's jump on into this interview. All right. Oh, my goodness. Michelle Y. Talbert, your bio is epic. Thank you again for being here and being our first interviewee on the Manifested Sis podcast. I'm so excited that you're doing this. I'm honored that you've asked me, Danny. You know it's always a yes for you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I love you for saying that. You're so gracious. So, oh, speaking of that epic bio, it seems like you have lived many lives, done so many things, and are clearly someone who knows how to manifest what she wants. So the first question I want to ask is what I'll be asking my guests first in all interviews. What does manifesting mean or look like to you? What it means to me is to have a vision of where I want to be, whether that's physically (laughs) emotionally, spiritually, uh, uh, almost like a GPS a little bit, right? And the manifesting part is how I get from here to there. How do I create this map and then follow it so that I get to the place where in my mind I'd like to be? But I have to admit that I am always open to frolics and detours, as we call them in law school. <laughs> so there are times when you get a little bit off that map, but you know how the general, you know, the GPS goes rerouting. Um, I believe that for me, it really has just worked out that I have an idea and I might not even focus on it very hard, but then it comes to pass. And I think that is the most beautiful thing and and how I've just kind of stumbled through life a lot. <laughs> but that's what manifesting is, just how it's manifested in my life. I love that. I really love that. Because yes, the vision, because if you don't have that, where the hell are you going? Right. I love that you relate it to a GPS. And frolics and detours, I've never heard that before, but I love it. So I'm assuming that you've had tons of frolics and detours in your own personal Ooh, development girl. journey. <laughs> So I'd love it if you'd walk our listeners through what your personal development journey was with all the frolics included. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's interesting because I learned that the biggest frolic that I had taken was in high school. And I was just, I just wasn't focused. Um, Going, uh, growing up, it was, you know, you know, she's intelligent, she's articulate, but she's just really chatty. And then it was, she never comes to class. Um, So it, it was just whatever I was going through in that period of time, um, just it didn't seem like I was going anywhere, 
right? And it, rudderless would probably be the best way to put it. And so when I graduated high school, I, I was sitting there at 17 and I remember sitting in the stands, and this is 33 years ago, sitting in the stands and hearing that the friends who I've been like out doing stuff that teenagers really weren't supposed to be doing with were getting into college, were getting scholarships. They were taking care of their business while they were frolicking and detouring. I was just frolicking and detouring. And so interestingly enough, I graduated high school and went straight into the workforce as a federal government employee. So that worked out, you know, decent, I guess. I got that good government job that everybody's parents <laughs> wants them to get and met my first husband. Um, and, you know, we got married when I was 18, uh, got had my son when I was 19, my daughter when I was 20. By the time I was 22, of course, I was a single divorced mom with two kids in diapers, no college education and a good government job. But but still, it wasn't exactly the highest and best use of my talents, skills, and abilities. And I started going to community college at night. And for almost 10 years, worked during the day as a secretary, went to school at night, raised the kids, um, was just blessed with a tribe that would, you know, pick them up, cook us dinner, whatever it took, because we really didn't have a lot of online education at the time. I am definitely dated myself. Um, and so... From there, I got recruited to Cornell University. And that's how I ended up at Cornell University at the age of 27. The kids and I moved up to Ithaca. We spent three years up there, studied abroad. I did everything, like everything that you could do in school, I was determined to do because I felt like I had missed out, right? Because sitting at that graduation, like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. And they're going all going to college um, was just a really big rude awakening. And so we graduated and I say we, the kids walked across the stage with me to get my bachelor's when oh. I was 30. And then we went on to law school and that was all me. Trust me. That was all me. <laughs> I graduated from law school at Penn and then um, went back to D.C. to practice corporate law and realized that I kind of hated it or didn't love the things about it that were the things that I was supposed to be doing, which is sitting in an office, doing the research, doing the drafting, um, not being out amongst people, networking and rainmaking. Right. Which is what I found I love to do. So, again, it was sort of all these twists and turns. But now you've spent these 16 years going along this path. You thought you wanted to be a lawyer and then you get there. Everybody's bought in. The kids have been uprooted. Um, so, you know, all that being said, you do the things that make sense in the moment to get your kids where they need to be. And then after my youngest graduated from um, college, I moved down here to South Florida from DC. So I've been in South Florida about five years. I launched my first podcast in 2009 while the kids were still in college, uh, high school. And, you know, just like wrote a book and started to be on social media. And I fell in love with the concept of social media and what that could do for exposure and, and elevating your voice. So I'm excited excited that you're doing a podcast because I've been in podcasting for 10 years and I love when people launch podcasts, especially strong women about great topics like this. Oh, thank you. Wow. I love the way you took us through that. And as you're telling your, your tale, I just feel like so much that you were really open to listening to your heart or your intuition and were very brave the whole way. <laughs> it seems like it was a journey of courage. And um, from high school and looking around like, whoa, what's going on? Hold on, y'all moving forward and I'm sitting still? From right. that moment, it feels like your courage just like leaped up and you were listening to your inner guidance, taking you to school, up to Cornell. And then most um, inspiringly, when you said, uh-oh, I got to redirect. I guess you got your rudders because you really decided, okay, I thought this was for me, but no, not anymore. I feel like the bravery that it took for you to make these epic life changes and steer your life in this new way from wannabe lawyer to recovering lawyer and social media guru <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot of development. Was it intentional personal development work that you were doing during this time? Or was it just what you found happened along the way? 
hybrid of that, right? Because what was so cool was because I had that good government job and they believe in, you know, sending you for trainings. I took my first ever personal development course when I was 18 years old and it was David Allen's, you know, uh, wow. to, like time management, right? How to get things, things done. done. Yeah. Yes. And it, I'm like sitting there, didn't know. Right. Now we know 30 years later how much of an epic opportunity that was. Right. But at the time, you know, he was just coming up doing corporate trainings. And so I sat there and I was transfixed. I bought the cassette tapes. I'm so mad at myself. I threw them away about six years ago. I wish I had kept them. Oh. Um, I bought the cassette tapes, how to get things done with a little workbook in it. And I was hooked. And so from 1980, 88 to now, I have studied personal development and really um, interestingly enough, I, I studied it. We can talk about whether I applied it or not. Um, but, but I just, I loved it. I was like a sponge with Tony Robbins, Sig Ziglar, Jim Brown. Like I love those folks. And then on a the spiritual side, Joyce Meyer, TD Jakes, John Maxwell, who's a hybrid, right? And I could just like drink in this information and these new ways of thinking about how how do you manage your time? How do you interact with people? What about manifestation or money? Or because again, you have those stories that are that get told and passed down that money is the root of all evil, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you have that thread going at the same time when you're trying to develop personally and it, they can kind of buck up against each other. Uh, that was Caribbean Roots came out. Let me say this, friction can, <laughs> can, can be caused. Um, so for me, it was never this, <laughs> my life has never been linear, but there have been these two parallel tracks. So I've always been the student of personal development and professional development and reading books and interesting stories and bi biographies, while at the same time trying to live my own life and navigate my path and raise my kids and, and have my own career and business. I love that. I love that you had that intentional streak to develop yourself while still making sure that you're doing all the air quote right things for your family and your life. So we're going to have to back up because I'm not going to let you gloss over that part about actually implementing what you were learning. So we're going to back up to I that part. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> oh, no, this is so common. I hear this so much from clients and friends alike. So let's talk about that. What was it that made you go from consuming the information and knowing it intellectually to actually embodying it and living it out? Um, I don't think I can point to any one particular aha moment. But what I can say, and it was actually fairly recent, if I'm honest, what I can say is that I, I learned about um, Jerry and Esther Hicks. Um, and I learned I read Jensen Cheryl's You Are a Badass at Making Money. See, because the real hurdle has always been for me the money piece, that even when I made money, I gave money away. I would repel money. So even when I attracted it, at the same time, I was repelling it. And so it was when I set a goal, and this was literally just two years ago, Danny. I set a goal to try to see if I could manifest money for seven days straight. It didn't matter the amount. It was. It didn't matter where it came from. I just wanted to see, could I manifest? You see, I didn't say make. Could I manifest money for seven days straight? And I did it. It was the rant, most rant, like an ebook sold for $5 that I had posted on Gumroad like back four years ago. Oh, wow, it was Gumroad. just like, just like, <laughs> right, right. So it was, it, but for seven days straight, I manifested money that was outside of my regular day job income. Yeah. And it was that moment that I said, you know what? What if I had applied all these like 20, 30,000 hours worth of information that I have inside of me and also really double down on sharing it with others? Because I think that's when it really, it really expands. 
Right. So for me, it was less about uh, an aha moment and more about how can I pour this into other people so that it is amplified. I love that. And I love your honesty there, letting us know that, you know, this journey started in 1988, y'all. And it was a few years ago that she really decided, hey, we're going to just make it do what it do and apply this. I am so thankful that you shared that because I know there are so many women who are like, oh, well, you know, talking down to themselves for knowing something but not acting on it or Mm -hmm. having fear that stutter stepping them or something. So, yes, I'm so glad that you were able to set that goal. And of course, you made the money seven days straight. You were ready. You were primed and mm-hmm. ready. And I mm-hmm. love what you're saying about um, sharing it out there. That part, I think, is the part that some people miss um, because, you know, it, it, they're excited about, oh my gosh, this stuff works. What else can I do for me? But mm-hmm. there is power in putting it out for others. And I'm so excited that you said that. And your whole business seems like it is wrapped around th- that concept with your Absolutely. space Absolutely. and... Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Have you ever had Thanksgiving or any type of holiday feast, whatever your beliefs or wherever you're located in the world, where that particular holiday is about eating and you eat and you eat and you imbibe and you eat. And at the end, it was lovely experience, (laughs) but at the end, everybody's like kind of looking around the table, like, why do we do this every year? (laughs) That's where I had reached. That's the point I had reached with my journey in personal development. I had consumed so much. I was bloated with information. And yes, I was applying some to me, but I had to almost like expunge it in, in a way, right? I had to get it out. It was almost gluttonous to not share it because it was so much. You know, it was so pants. unbutton. Yeah. Yeah. Button yeah. those pants, Definitely. man. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> like, no thanks. I don't want dessert. I'm going to share my dessert with this one over here. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And really, it was also spawned by me thinking, Okay, on the one hand, I'm on stages and, you know, we had written the book back in 2011 and um, it was like an Amazon bestseller. So we started getting asked to to speak around the country about the topic of online dating, which is the space I was in at the time. And because at the same time, I was also becoming this social media maven, I was sharing the journey. And more and more women were coming into my inbox and saying how... Did you do that? And I think one of the things I've learned in personal and professional development is that when people come to you with questions, that means that you have actually been positioned as an expert, whatever it is. They perceive you as an expert. Like you said, regardless of the the way we might talk down to ourselves, the external appearance is that you know what the hell you're doing. And so the more questions I got, the more I realized, my goodness, there's a lack of information out there that I didn't realize because I was always in, 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 I was always sort of um, uh, in these spaces. I was orbiting in these spaces where I felt just regular, not realizing there was a whole world out there who didn't know this information. Sometimes you you get blinded. Right. When you're around too many people who are like minded. And so they, the women coming into my inbox, really were the ones who said, Michelle, we need you to tell us what's going on. How did this, how how did you get in Forbes? How did that happen? (laughs) I'm like, I don't know. Because that's the other part, right? Well, you think, but but so many of us, how many of your listeners and even possibly you have said, well, it comes so easy to me. There's no way that I'm supposed to be teaching this. There's no way that other people don't know this. This is just so easy. (laughs) And it's like easy for you. (laughs) (laughs) And I forget that. And I think a lot of us tend to forget that. It's we think, oh, you know, what's special about us? How are we shining brighter than others? If it comes easy to us, then of course it comes easy to other people. But we have to remember, like, no, we are all special little unicorns. And what comes easy to you might be the hardest thing in the world for me. And it took me a while to to kind of realize that and accept it. I honestly was thinking in the past that people were just being polite or being kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Right. And then I had to realize, like, wait a second, no, I'm dope. And I'm really dope. Right. You really are. You really are. Well, thank you. And so are you, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll accept that. And look, how long ago was it that probably either of us would have tried to shirk that off? Oh, no, it's nothing. No, it is something. We are dope. It is true. Absolutely. So, yeah, that is definitely one of the, the roadblocks that I think can keep people stuck. Do you think, do you know of any other kind of roadblocks that might pe- keep people stuck on their own personal development journeys? Yes. Not belong- believing is possible for them. Amen. And that's why I mentioned the Jen Sincero book, because that opened my eyes. I think I read it for the first time maybe three years ago, four years ago, and I've read it probably twice a year. It's actually our next book club read as well um, in, in our community, because I, I mean, I was reading these pages and for the first time I was like, eh, I don't think I can do that. And they teach you when you're sort of doing different types of personal development training where they're helping you to learn how to help others, that they say there are different types of objections that people have. And the first one is, you don't know what you're talking about. The second one is, I don't think I can do what you're teaching me. And that probably was the biggest hurdle for me in terms of the abundance mindset Mm. and the manifestation in terms of physical economic money. Why am I trying (laughs) to come up with other words? Money. Sugar coat here. Right, right, right. (laughs) So um, I think that that is a big hurdle for a lot of us is that you think, oh, that's them. Oprah's a billionaire. I can never be a billionaire. Why not? Maybe you could. Right. But don't start off with that mindset because that is manifestation 101, which is as a woman thinketh, so is she. She. That is right. Absolutely. The belief is a very huge part of it. And I don't know if you'll allow me to dig. What did you do to combat that initial belief of I don't think I can? Was there any specific tactics or tools you used? Yes, little successes. And, you know, I, I, I want to be really clear that um, some of my what people would call bravery is just straight up ignorance. <laughs> um, remember, I was in my 20s. <laughs> I was in my 20s, right? We, you know, we feel like we're invincible in our 20s. I just happened to be a mother at the same time. And so it was easy to say, oh, no, of course we're going to go to Ithaca. Of course we can do this. Of course we're going to go to Philly. Of course we can do this. Right. And my kids, you know, for better or for worse, got to kind of go along on that ride with me. And um, it worked out to be a beautiful thing, but it was because not necessarily that I was brave, but I had hubris. I had the hubris of youth. And that can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. It worked out in my favor, but not always in my favor because I did a lot of dumb things too. Um, so, So I don't know that I was brave. I actually was probably dumb, <laughs> you know? <laughs> We're not going to say that. You were no, not dumb. But I, no, I'm we're not. But, of childlike wonder. <laughs> okay. Yeah, whatever. You didn't know me. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, but anyway, no, seriously, though, I mean, so so that's part of it. I do know that I've gotten more risk averse as I've gotten older, but I probably still have a bigger birth of, um, of risk. Uh, that I'm willing to take than the average person possibly, right? And the reason is, to get back to your original question, I just wanted to give that backdrop, is that little be- little successes begets the next success. So I always say success begets success. In other words, if I can tie my shoes, if I can put my shoes on and tie them up, then the, the likelihood of me getting to the gym is heightened. So it's the little thing you do that gives you that sense of accomplishment and success that can propel you to the next thing. And so for me, it was the little successes outside of, you know, going through the process of completing my college and, and, and law school um, degrees. Those were big milestones for me, but also what were great milestones for me was ensuring that my kids got to college and my kids got to be well-rounded, healthy people. So those each of these, big. those are big successes, right? But but along the way, it was, did you, did Michelle, did you get out of bed and go to work today, right? Because there are times when you're just depressed and sad too. And so getting up and putting on clothes and getting in the car and going to work and making it back home, that was a successful day some days. 
Absolutely. I love that celebrating the little successes. And I know that with my clients, I try to remind them, yes, your goal is to lose 40 pounds this year, but you're going to lose them one at a time. So let's celebrate each pound as we go right. on this journey right. because it is a journey. So right. I love that you focused on those little successes to help you build your belief that you do deserve and you can get, be, do, have all those things you were working towards. That's awesome. I really feel like success is a muscle to be quite frank. It really is. It's a really? muscle because we control okay. our success. Mm. I refuse to, to submit that it's external factors. I don't ignore external factors exist. I'm just willing to push, push through them because I'm stronger. And if not, I'm going to find my tribe and we're going to do it together then. So you've been flexing your success muscle for a while now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and have tons of success with that muscle. Um, <laughs> but for the newbie who is just hearing, maybe this is the first time they're even hearing personal development as a term. What would you say for that person who ha doesn't even know they have a muscle, a success muscle to flex? What would you tell them? Um, find something that they're interested in and or read a good book, a good biography, find someone who they're interested in and see if there's what's been written about that person. Because nine times out of 10, that person's story is, is also wrought with um, hurdles and, and, and challenges along the way. And I think to be able to identify and align yourself with someone who you think has quote unquote made it or someone to whom you aspire or someone who you deeply respect, to be able to read about what their reality was can really help someone who's brand new understand that this is all a journey for all of us and that we can just sort of take that one foot and put it in front of the next foot and put it in front of the next foot and put it in front of the next foot. But, you know, to, to talk in, in memes, you know, we always get to see somebody's front stage. We don't get to see their backstage. So look at someone's backstage. Find someone's story, find a good biography and and then see what they've been through and read another and another until you begin to realize, hey, they're really not that much different than I am. And it, I tell you, it can happen if you're just willing, you know, read that first chapter. Because it's that, usually the first yeah. chapter is the one that's like, I was born a poor black child in a one room <laughs> shack. You know, that's the chapter that with all the meat, like, oh my God, how'd they make it? <laughs> that is fantastic. You know, they say that when there's something you want to do, look for proof that it can be done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that way confirmation bias can take over in your brain. So this is a very easy way to go about doing that, especially if you don't have people in your, your life or your mm -hmm. tribe that is doing something big. If you are the first one, if you are, you know, the outlier in your community and you feel like, hmm, I feel like there's something I can do and you don't have anyone to look to, look to online spaces, look to biographies of people who are doing it big and see where you align. That's fantastic advice. I love yeah, that. I love that the way that you just put that all together. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I, I love the way that you work with clients and you think about the newbie and where we all are in our journey. Thanks for being that thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you. Because you said it. I just reworded it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we're going to wrap up in a sec. I just, I'm curious, since you seem like a big reader, do you have other things in your daily personal development toolbox that you do to stay in alignment and stay moving forward and upward? Music, music. I'm a huge music fan. And now there is something called um, Trap Affirmations by these two brothers. As in, when I say brothers, I mean, they're two black guys. They're not brothers that are blood related. They are, <laughs> and I believe they're out of Atlanta and they're music producers and they pr produce great music, hip hop, things like that. And they released, yeah, Chris and Teep, they released this trap affirmations, uh, manifestation, manifest Investing tracks that are incredible, you know, and they take you from waking up to money to all is perfect and complete to, you know, to be great, you have to be grateful. And I listen to that about three times every morning. My homegirl, Courtney Bowden out of Atlanta introduced me to that, to them. And it has been so wonderful because I, you know, I listen to affirmations and stuff, but to have that trap beat, what? <laughs> <laughs> 
I love that. And yeah. I listen to it um, taking the kids to school in the morning. Um, um, My son is obsessed with it. Yeah, so. me too. I am too. Yeah. It's great. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you. So this has been eye-opening, inspiring, and informative, all wrapped up in one awesome bundle. I want you to tell everyone where they can find you, what you're working on. Give us all the links. And don't worry, everyone. I'll put it in the show notes for you. Oh, thank you so much, Danny. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm just so excited that you are getting this word out. I do believe that the metaphysical uh, uh, information that is out there is so important. Of course, in miracles is another thing that also helped to open up my eyes um, and Marian Williamson. So this journey for me has actually been pretty new with the manifestation and the mindset pieces. So I want to say that, uh, you know, because it's important that it's been a 30 year journey, but I'm still learning constantly. Um, so for me, I am the curator. I consider myself to be the chief curator of spaces online and in person where people can connect. And so we have Her Power Space here located in Broward County in Sunrise, Florida. We are a co-working event venue and podcast studio. I'm in the studio right now on our equipment. So hopefully I sound nice and crispy on our mics. Um, <laughs> shame shameless plug. And um, we are here for your needs in terms of co-working meetings, um, events, uh, workshops, and meeting with clients. And that's Her Power Space, where we are woman forward and men welcoming. And that is an an in-person brick and mortar space. I also have the Her Power Moves community, which was spawned, like I said, with those women asking me all these questions. I said, let's figure out a way to bring this community together and answer the questions together on our journey. And our entire ethos is to eliminate isolation and increase wealth for women solopreneurs and side hustlers. We have three chapters in Jacksonville, Broward and Dade, and are always looking for ways to do pop-ups and expand around the country. And that is a place where we are online. You can connect with us at herpowermoves.com. And the space is herpower.space. And we have just launched, to be quite frank, in the midst of Corona, um, which doesn't make this evergreen anymore. Apologies. But um, we (laughs) have just launched the Unchamber, which is a place where we can come together and create cash flow ethically. We are putting the met, the model of the typical chamber of commerce on its ear. And we are connecting in ways that is that are ethical, but also enable us to learn from one another, share resources. And this is a completely co-ed online community. And that's available at the unchamber.herpowermoves.com. I am just super excited because it's 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 a mixture of, you know, Facebook stripping out the cat videos and focusing us <laughs> on business, but still having fun. Um, and the Chamber of Commerce and 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 being able to interact with businesses that are e-commerce as well as in-person um, businesses. So for me, the bottom line is I curate spaces for people to come together and transact, feel safe, get information and grow. I love it. I love the sound of that unchamber. Sounds very novel. So I'm excited for you. I am too. Nice. Nice. And on social, where can we find you? I'm everywhere at Michelle White. (laughs) Like Danny's laughing because she knows she like she really is everywhere. I spend most of my time on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. I am Michelle Y. Talbert and her power moves everywhere. Awesome. Thank you again so much. This was so enlightening. I hope it resonated so much with you listeners. And thank you, Michelle. And everyone, I'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Talk to you next week.